Hey guys, Buildzoid from Actually Hardcore Overclocking here. Today we're taking a look at a new entry into the motherboard market, the NZXT N7Z370. So yeah, NZXT now apparently designs motherboards because obviously they don't actually have a motherboard manufacturing plant. Um, but they can certainly design a motherboard. So this thing is mostly targeted at having like RGB controls and fan headers and aesthetics. Um, which are all things I honestly don't care about or know very much about. And quite frankly, they're mostly subjective. So it's like, we're not going to address those. What we're here to check up is, what I'm here for is to check that the VRMs are up to scratch and that NZXT hasn't just sacrificed all of the, all of the you know, VRM quality to the aesthetics gods. So let's get right into that. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA and their GTX 1080 Ti SC2 video card with ICX technology. The 1080 Ti SC2 has nine thermal sensors spread across the board, which allows you to easily check the cooling performance of the VRAM, the VRM power components, and the GPU. This makes for better noise to performance tuning in software, and you can learn more about the SC2 at the link in the description below. Basically, all of the VRMs in the, on this board are, well, all the big ones. There's obviously minor voltage, you know, there's various other voltage regulators scattered around the board for like the chipset and, uh, well, VPP, which is somewhere here, quite possibly that thing. Um, there's you know, some various minor rails scattered around the board. But the main ones, the important ones, are all located right around the CPU socket in this great big L-shaped block. Um, and this is actually four different VRMs. So this portion right here, that is the iGPU. So I'm just going to call that vGPU. Um, next to that, we find the vCore. And the vCore ends right around here, because under that we find the vCCSA and the vCCIO. So that's your system agent power and your memory controller power. So that's all the VRMs. They're controlled by this chip and that chip. This chip up here is a IR35201. This chip down here is a 35204. Actually, I can put that right on the board because there's space down here. IR35204. This thing supports up to four phase output at two megahertz switching frequency. Um, not that that's actually a useful switching frequency because most MOSFETs, even after like a doubling scheme, um, th this is going to be like one megahertz, which is way too high for most MOSFETs, especially if you want any amount of VRM efficiency. Um, admittedly, this board is actually using like pretty modern power, mo like dual NFETs that are, well, the, actually these are really modern because there's no public data sheet for some of these at, uh, right now. Um, so these are actually optimized for 500 kilohertz. So there is progress in the power, uh, uh, you know, power transistor industry. We're going steadily higher and higher switching frequencies on these things um, as they get more and more optimized. Similar to CPUs and more gigahertz over time. But anyway, uh, so 35204 four down here, four phases, two megahertz. Not that that is useful yet. And this is a eight phase, um, also two megahertz maximum switching frequency. Uh, so let's get into the details of the biggest, um, well, vCore and v vGPU share the IR35201 uh, here. So I can't address one without addressing the other. So uh, in terms of uh, setup, the vCore VRM looks like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight phase but that is an eight phase voltage controller and it's also doing vGPU. So this is using a doubling scheme. So that is a four times two on that part. And indeed that's exactly what we see because we have four of these chips behind the, uh, behind the actual MOSFETs and those are international rectifier IR 3598s. Uh, side note, International Rectifier is now owned by Infineon, who actually makes the MOSFETs that this board, well, some of the MOSFETs that this board uses. So the IR3598s. Now these cause a bit of a problem with the vGPU because I'm not sure if that's a two, that if that's two phases getting doubled or if that's four phases true, because these are doublers and or dual drivers, which uh, basically means 
that they can either double or they can, well, they always act as a driver, right? But you have kind of multiple options of how you can uh, achieve the dri driver outputs. So basically you can feed two PWM signals into one of these, and then you get two driver outputs without any doubling, or you can feed one PWM signal into it, and then you get a doubled up, uh, and then it basically acts as a doubler that also does uh, driver duty for two phases, um, which means the iGPU portion could be a plus four, or it could be a plus uh, two times two. Um, I'm really not sure which it is because of these being what they are. And the board also being located on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, and I'm me, me only having pictures. Um, either way, the iGPU VR, like, if you're buying this motherboard, which costs, uh, I think right now it's supposed to be $250 MSRP, um, if you're using the IGP, if you're using an IGPU with this motherboard, um, you've done something really wrong in like your build planning phase. I'm like, sorry, but no, like that's ridiculous. So, you know, I'm ultimately not that concerned about the IGPU VRM here because uh, it's not all that useful for most people. Anyway, uh, the vCore VRM is a doubled up four phase. Uh, which is obviously significantly better than just having a straight four phase. It's not as good as if you had an eight. Um, you could argue it's around, well, depending on how it's configured, you can actually get it to almost the same performance as an eight phase, but uh, generally speaking, it's better to have a true eight phase. Ultimately, four times two is really, really popular on a lot of motherboards. I don't really have any like huge complaints about this especially for a motherboard that doesn't even target overclocking. Like, this thing is really supposed to look good first and then be a motherboard second. So, you know, that, that's fine in my book. Um, the actual MOSFETs uh, used for this thing are really nice. So, as I said before, they're made by Infineon, and these are BSG0812... ND power blocks, uh, dual NFETs, basically they integrate the high side and the low side MOSFET into one convenient package. They're rated for a maximum current output of 50 amps, assuming you can cool them, and you can't exceed that because the packaging for the MOSFETs would actually, uh, well, it would fail. Basically, the connections between the silicon that is actually used to make the MOSFETs and the motherboard and the, the actual ceramic top and the pins on the, the packaging um, those connections aren't built to survive more than 50 amps. So basically, these are limited to that 50 amps current output. Like, that that's a hard limit. You can't exceed that. Um, well, if you throw enough cooling at just about anything, you can <laughs> exceed the, the max rating. But generally speaking, if you go over 50 amps on these, they're going to have serious problems with it. Um... In terms of actual specs, I can't give you hard data because uh, I don't actually have uh, data sheets for this specific MOSFET. However, um, there are public data sheets for the 0811 and the 0813. And talking to a contact that does have access to the, you know, the non-public data sheet for these, I know for a fact that it's right in between a 0811 and a 0813 in terms of specs. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in reading the data sheets, just read these two and then, you know, scale everything down to halfway in between. Um, that's the deal with, uh, with the BSG 0812. Nonetheless, these are, you know, the, these are high-end power blocks, like 50 amps is a very high current output. Most of the time you, well, on like Z270, 40 amp was standard. And even on like X370, 40 amp power blocks are pretty standard. So 50 amps is a, it's a pretty good upgrade over like the last generation of motherboards we've seen. And the end result is that even on Coffee Lake, which is a pretty power hungry platform for a 5.1 gigahertz overclock, right? 5.1 gigahertz, which is achievable for daily if you have a good enough chip and at 1.42 volts, um, which produces about 200 watts of power consumption. Um, which also means you're going to be pushing about 140 amps out of the vCore VRM. Um, the VRM will actually only produce about 12 watts of heat on the MOSFETs, which really isn't that much as long as NZXT has a halfway decent heatsink on top of this. Um, but I'm not, you know, I have a photo. <laughs> Steve's going to test if the, if the cooling system on this motherboard is actually uh, adequate. 
Um, so you can look forward to that. You should subscribe to see that. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so and obviously that 12 watt, well, that 12 watts of uh, heat dissipation, that's at 500 kilohertz switching frequency um, and five volts gate drive. So, you know, pr pretty standard parameters for a VRM. It might actually be running a higher uh, drive voltage because the 3598s and even these power blocks, they support much higher drive voltages like 10 volts or even 12 volts. But uh, since I'm not sure what NZXT is actually using, I'm just gonna use the lowest one because that one will give you the worst uh, efficiency. Um, and that way I can't overshoot if the VR, like the VRM could be better, but it certainly shouldn't be any worse than what I've just written down. Um, now for a much more reasonable overclock, probably the kind of overclock that somebody with this motherboard would end up at, uh, 4.8 gigahertz and about 1.3 volts, you'll be looking at about 120 amps output and about 160, wait, nope, 155 watts of uh, power consumption. Um, and for that, the VRM will actually produce only about 7.5 watts of heat. So that's, uh, that's really kind of nothing. Um, very, very le little heat output at that point, and the VRM should have no problem handling that. So, you know, if you're just doing some moderate overclocking, this motherboard really shouldn't let you down. Um, and even if you really want to push it, uh, it should be fine unless the, unless the, you know, the aesthetics focus got in the way of the cooling capabilities of the VRM heatsink. Um, which again, like, the, you need test data for that, I can't tell you. Um, but in terms of actual MOSFET selection, there, I have no complaints for the vCore VRM. Now, moving on to the iGPU VRM, uh, that's... Oh, and incidentally, all of these power figures, those are for an 8700K, because uh, that's the power-hungriest CPU you can get for Coffee Lake at this point in time. Now, for the iGPU, um, you get a some kind of four-phase. It might be doubled, it might not be doubled. I'm not entirely sure. Um, Intel specs that the iGPU VRM has to provide up to 45 amps of current. Um, they do not specify a voltage, so I just took an educated guess at 1.1 volts. Um, and uh, at that kind of current and you know voltage output, same switching frequency and drive voltage, um, the four phase for the iGPU will produce about three watts of heat. So on the off chance that you don't have a GPU but do have a $250 motherboard, um, your, your iGPU is going to have, you know, the VRM for the iGPU is plenty overkill. Um, don't have to worry about that. Finally, moving on to the VCCSA and the VCCIO, which are the really, like, these, these are really minor VRMs. Um, they do barely any work. Uh, VCCSA by Intel spec is 1.05 volts um, and 11 amps. And uh, if you're overclocking, that would probably, like, if you're really hammering the memory overclock, so, you know, the board doesn't officially support uh, DDR4000 um, or any speed above 3866, so you you shouldn't need a high VCCSA. But there is a small chance that even for lower speeds, just because the motherboard has a wor like is performing worse in memory overclocking in general, you might need more VCCSA to stabilize lower speeds. Um, nonetheless, the maximum voltage you would ever really want to go to for VCCSA is maybe 1.35 volts. Um, 1.4 volts could also be fine, but really, if you want your memory controller working in a year or two, uh, you want to stay away from 1.4 volts. So 1.35 volts, you'd be looking at maybe 15 amps uh, current output for the VCCSA rail, um, and that's maximum, not like constant, just maxed out. Uh, and for that, for well, for 11 amps, you're going to be looking at about 1 watt of heat output. For 15 amps, about 1.5 watts of heat output. Oh, oops, read my notes wrong. 1.5 watts for 11 and uh, 2.3 watts-ish for 15 amps. So again, you know, nothing. <laughs> There's really no concern here. Really, the biggest concern um, is going to be if, like, you're really pushing the CPU core clock. Um, the vCore VRM might get hot if the heatsink is inadequate. The VCCIO uh, rail, it's a single phase. And, uh, well, that's normally specced at 0.95 volts from Intel and about 6 amps output, which is nothing. 
and the well if you're overclocking it you might end up at you know 1.35 volts again same uh same restrictions apply as on vccsa you don't want to go anywhere in, like 1.4 volts won't kill the chip instantly but going to 1.4 or over 1.4 for extended periods of time is a pretty bad idea um so at 1.35 you might be looking at about 9 amps uh in of uh, current through the VCCIO rail. And, uh, you know, for six amps, one watt of heat output, and nine amps, you're gonna be looking at about 1.5 watts of heat output. And I've just remembered that I forgot to mention who makes the MOSFETs for these. Um, these three, well, the MOSFETs for VCCSA and VCCIO and the actual memory VRM are all the same. Um, they're dual NFETs. They're from Sinopower, and these are SM7340s. Uh, they don't have a maximum current spec, um, but they're uh, they're actually like in terms of uh, like on resistance, these are actually really good, very low RDS on, but they're pretty slow. Um, they switch rather slowly. They have pretty high input capacitances, especially the low side FET on one of these is absolutely snail speed. So the end result is that well, that's why it's used for minor rails. It's not a like it's not really a great MOSFET for uh, for anything major, um, but then again, that's why it's used for VCCSA and VCCIO because using these power blocks, um, using the Infineon power blocks would be just massively overkill. I mean, even these are massively overkill. This is barely any heat. So, yeah, um, no complaints for me for you know NZXT's uh, choice of MOSFETs there, and the memory. Um, DDR4, very power efficient, you know, four sticks, you might be, well, four sticks, 1.35 volts, you might be looking at about eight watts of, uh, heat output, which is nothing, and that, also at 1.35 volts, that's about six amps, and, uh, yeah, at that kind of current draw, that VRM will only produce about one watt of heat, kind of similar to the VCCIO situation right there, um, so yeah, I have I have really no complaints in terms of MOSFET selection and voltage controller selection, though I don't know what the controller for memory power for memory is, but like again, DDR4 is just so easy to power. Like there memory power has never ever been a like major issue on a DDR4 motherboard in terms of memory overclocking. The main issues come in uh the memory trace layout. Um which basically you need testing. You need to test if the motherboard is good at memory overclocking or not, because uh, unless uh, NZXT sends you their, you know, motherboard schematics, you're not going to be able to tell if the, the trace layout they have is good. And also the BIOS. Um, you know, a bad BIOS can absolutely ruin memory overclocking very, very quickly. Um, and NZXT does only spec this board for DDR4, uh, you know, to 3866 megahertz. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't expect great things in terms of memory overclocking out of this board. But, again, it's targeting being a fan hub and an RGB controller and uh, some aesthetics things not, you know, breaking world records. So, I, I don't really have uh, issues with, uh, with uh, like, I, I don't... Obviously, as an overclocker, I'd like to see it, like like to see better memory overclocking support. But as, as far as the VRMs are concerned, uh, NZXT hasn't like done any like they they've not done any huge uh, mistakes. Like there's nothing like the Vcore VRM is solid. IGPU is overkill. VCCSA and VCCIO are overkill. Um, the memory power is overkill. There's like no complaints from me in terms of uh vrms the bios might need work maybe the trace layout for memory might need work but uh physically the board is sound um and the last thing to address um because people have been recently kind of interested in this um all of the capacitors on the board well all of the uh well all of the aluminum polymers on the motherboard so all of these can types i'm not sure what the audio section capacitors are but all of the CAN types, um, the black ones, those are, they're not niche cons, um, which is an easy mistake to make because I know a lot of motherboard manufacturers, you know, they have uh, black colored niche con FP series capacitors, but the coloring of a capacitor is something you can literally just like ask the company to do for you. 
Um, all the capacitors here are APAC, and uh, that's uh, that's a Taiwanese uh, cap manufacturer. They're extremely popular on uh, motherboards under the two hundred dollar mark. Um, so especially like if you buy low end motherboards, you probably have these. Um, and uh, yeah, these are rated. The ones on this board are rated for five thousand hours, one hundred and five degrees centigrade, and they're aluminum polymers. So you know, bog standard mid range capacitor, basically. Um, no complaints from me there either. So yeah, that's that. There's not really much to this board because uh, it doesn't target overclocking that hard. Um, but it is a solid entry. You know, it's uh, the the BIOS. I I don't know. I've not seen the BIOS, but as far as the, the hardware is concerned, NZXT hasn't done anything uh, horrifically wrong. So that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you'd like to support what we do here at Gamers Nexus, uh, there's going to be a Patreon link in the description or on the video or in the comments or somewhere. Uh, I don't actually do the publishing. And uh, if you'd like to see more content with me, I have a channel called Actually Hardcore Overclocking. You could go check that out. Thanks for watching and see you next time.